Welcome to iLecture Online and here's a continuation of how we work with momentum and impulse and particularly now we're going to talk about impulse and we like to use the letter I to indicate impulse. And just to get us back um, where we need to be here and understanding what this is all about, we can define impulse in two ways. Impulse can be defined as a force that is applied to an object times the amount of time that that force is active on the object and we'll call that delta t. So impulse can be defined as a force acting for a certain amount of time on an object which then causes a change in momentum of that object and so we can also define moment, uh, impulse as the change in momentum p and of course since p is uh, mass times velocity that means that impulse can be defined as a change in mass times velocity and since usually the mass doesn't change, uh, we can take the mass out there uh, in front of that change sign, so it's mass times a change in velocity. So you can see that an impulse, which is a force applied to an object for a certain amount of time, can also be defined as a change in momentum, which means it's the change in the velocity of an object with a certain mass, m. All right, here's an example to illustrate that. We have a five kilogram object which is moving to the right at 20 meters per second and is subjected to a 2,000 newton force directed to the left for 25 milliseconds. What will be the final velocity of the object? So to get a feel for that, let's draw a little picture. So here we have an object that is moving to the right with a velocity v equal to 20 meters per second and it has a mass equal to five kilograms. Then it's subjected to a force acting to the left. Force is equal to, uh, we said, 2,000 newtons. And the duration of the force, the delta T, is equal to uh, 25 milliseconds. That's 25 one-thousandth of a second. All right, so is it enough impulse to stop the object? Is it enough impulse to stop it and also push it backwards? Or is it enough impulse simply to slow down and will continue to the right at a slower velocity? That's what we're trying to find out. All right, so using our definition, we can now say since impulse is a change in momentum, we can then say that um, impulse is equal to, let's figure that out, force times delta T, which is equal to 2,000 newtons multiplied times 25 milliseconds, which is 0.025 seconds. And that will give us the impulse, which is also the change in momentum. Okay, here's my calculator. 2,000 times 0 0.025 equals, so we get an impulse of 50. Now, since impulse has units of newtons times time and seconds, this will be newton seconds which can also be converted to units of momentum, which is um, kilograms meters per second. So this is equal to 50 kilograms meters per second. If you're not sure about that one, remember that newtons is a units of uh, kilograms meters per second squared. And if we multiply that times seconds, you can see that this times this does indeed give you the same units as momentum. All right, now we can say that the P final is equal to P initial plus the change in the momentum. And the change in momentum right here is defined as the impulse change in momentum. So the initial momentum of the object is defined by the mass times its initial velocity and then we add to that the change in the momentum. Notice that we have a mass of 20 kilograms, no, 5 kilograms, so we have 5 kilograms. We multiply that times the velocity, and the initial velocity was 20 meters per second. And then we add to that the change in momentum. Now we have to be careful. The initial momentum is to the right and the change in momentum caused by impulse is to the left. So it's a negative quantity, a minus 50 kilograms meters per second. All right, so 50 times 20 is 100 kilogram meters per second. And then we subtract from that 50 kilogram meters per second, which is a change in momentum caused by the impulse. So the net result is that the object will still have a positive, directed to the right, 
a momentum of 50 kilogram meters per second. So that would be P final. And there's our answer. So you can see that, yes, there was a force imparting a change in momentum onto the object. It wasn't big enough. It only took care of half the momentum. And so it will continue to write with half of its original momentum that it had before. So if it means half the original momentum, can we figure out how fast it's moving? Well, if it was moving at 20 meters per second, when it had a momentum of 100 kilogram meters per second, how fast is it now moving when it only has a momentum of 50 kilogram meters per second? And you can then say, well, it should therefore be half the velocity because the mass hasn't changed. So it will now be moving to the right at 10 meters per second. And that's what we can do with impulse. I think we need to show a few more examples of that. All right, let's try it.